Geneva has been trying all roads to rescue the talks and avoid a possible dead end uh, for these talks. Now, what will Russia do now in light of this U.S. decision? Well, I think uh, the Russians uh, have been supplying the Syrian government with military hardware, and uh, I don't think uh, the declaration today changes anything. It's just a formal declaration. I don't think the U.S. military support to the rebels started to do with this declaration. It just came to, uh, I mean, to publicize what we all know. So in practical terms, the declaration has no impact none whatsoever, neither on negotiators nor on the conditions on the ground. But how can, how can the U.S. know for sure that the arms and the finance are going to what they called to moderate fighters and not to extremists? I mean, the last time they gave the FSA, they were, want, they were aiming at giving the FSA the, the arms, and it ended by Isis taking the arms. Yeah, exactly. They, they stormed uh, the warehouses near the In Turkish borders. Alcohol. Yes, that, that is true. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not in a position to attest to their ability to make sure that uh, the weapons will go into, to, in quote unquote, to the right hands in their opinion. You know, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, uh, uh, the battleground conditions between the different factions of the opposition are volatile. And one day, one faction advances, and on the other day, another faction advances. So. Uh, I wouldn't really read much into the declaration, nor into the announcement about the supply of weapons to quote unquote modern mm -hmm. elements with moderate elements within the opposition. Well, uh, Mr. Hananu, what do you think the U.S. means by moderate elements in uh, Syria? I mean, how can they tell that they are moderate? And even if they are uh, so-called moderate by the U.S., I mean, they are still using the arms to fight. Uh, Syrian, the Syrian army, the, the legitimate army of the country, and also terrorizing certain uh, uh, residents of the areas which are besieged. How can you explain that? Well, there's no explanation. To be honest with you, this is a new terminology being used and created in Syria alone. I have never heard anybody carry an arm and being a moderate. Mm -hmm. There is no, there is, there is no, nothing in any dictionary could explain to you how could you carry an arm and attack the civilian and attack the army of your own country and still being called the moderate. The moderate in the United States dictionary is the same thing when they call Saudi Arabia is a moderate country a country where the woman cannot even drive, yet mm -hmm. it's moderate country. I mean, this terminology comes up as it needed from United States, and United States being the superpower, every, everybody takes its word and, and, and run with it. And this is the problem. Anybody who carries arm against its own people, its own army, its own government, it's not a moderate. Mm -hmm. A moderate person who sits on the table, negotiate, talk, suffer the consequences of his opposition, pay the price because this is the country. It's the country of our kids and our future. And it's, it's worth sacrificing. Mm -hmm. But for you to carry the arm and kill the other side who is also Syrian and then call yourself a moderate, it's, it's an insult to, 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 to people's intelligence. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Mr. Hanano, uh, in light of this discussion, why won't the opposition delegation, or for, for that matter, the people who are ordering the opposition delegation, if you'd like it uh, that way, why don't they compromise for early elections instead of transitional government, given that the upper hand in the battlefield is still in favor of the uh, Syrian army, even after three years of ongoing warfare? I mean, why wouldn't, wouldn't they just stop the bloodshed and go for early elections? They don't have the candidate. That's their problem. They do not have a winning candidate they could back. And that's the only reason they refuse to go to an early election like you suggested. Early election, have your candidate run. If he wins, he wins. If he doesn't win, he doesn't win. But the problem is, who's the candidate? But, but the, Saudi, the, Saudi, excuse me, the, the Saudi Arabian foreign minister did call Al Jarba, Mr. President. <laughs> well, good for him. He could have put him as a prime minister in his own country. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Mr. Jarba even has a Syrian citizenship anymore. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what, what uh, Al Faisal calls Mr. President, that's completely and totally up to him. He does not decide or speak for the Syrian people who their president is. Whether you agree with President Assad or not, whether he is a good president or not, when you are coming to elect a new leadership, it has to be done the right way. If we assume that President Assad came to power the wrong way, then you do not repeat it by imposing somebody else from outside power. Then you do it the right way by having people within the country 
go to the, to, to the, through the ballot box and elect their own people. Plus, those elections are going to be monitored like nothing else in the world. Mm -hmm. Everybody's eyes will be on the ballot box, mm -hmm. and everybody mm -hmm. will make sure it's a fair election. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know what they are afraid of, but the only thing I could tell you, they don't have the candidate to run against Assad or anybody from the inside. Mm -hmm. That's why they want to get the concession before they go to the ballot box and force the issue according to the concession they reach in Geneva. Mm -hmm. Well, gentlemen, we will continue our discussion sure. for tonight and ask why doesn't Mr. Assad simply just leave office and call for early elections for that matter as well? But we have to take our second break sure. for tonight. Please mm -hmm. stay tuned. We will be right back. Beyond the lines, beyond the surface, depth, clarity, substance. discourse beyond politics beyond the shallowness of everyday politics the crisis of capitalism the European impasse the energy shortages the emerging power of Asia the economic power of the Arab world, the economic debate, informative, revealing, and progressive. It discusses the economic event of the world. Economic debate, where the numbers reveal the truth. We are back with the Middle East stream with Dr. Hilal Khashan and Mr. Akil Hananu from Atlanta. Now, Dr. Khashan, during his press conference here in Deputy Foreign uh, Minister Faisal al maghdad affirmed that the departure of President Assad is a destined formula for the destruction of Syria and his presence a, as a head of state is a guarantee for Syria to overcome this crisis. Now, why doesn't President Assad just resign from office and call for early elections to save the country all the bloodshed and probably also to prove that he has legitimacy if the people re-elect him. Mm -hmm. To tell you the truth, not even uh, the Russians or the Americans want Mr. Assad to quit right now. No, 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 let me explain to you. You need to make a difference between public statements and uh, uh, real uh, positions. Uh, the Americans as much as the Russians are, are very much interested in preserving the institutions of the Syrian state, including the military and security forces. They want to make sure that political transition in Syria, no matter what shape it takes, mm -hmm. okay, will be smooth and does not lead to chaos. Right now, the institutions of the state remain intact. And I think there is an understanding in the international community that the existing institutions, including that of state, must remain in place in order to shore the country to safety. Well, we have Dr. Kamal Labwani, who was on Jazeera uh, yesterday and said that the Americans have forced them uh, to sign uh, papers about uh, federalizing uh, uh, Syria. They want to uh, break up uh, Syria into pieces for further uh, uh, ruling. What do you think of this uh, theory? I mean, uh, you mean uh, they, create a, they want to create a federal order? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. There have been uh, rumors circulating uh, for the past uh, year or so about the establishment of a decentralized uh, administration into Syria. Uh, I don't think Syria is ready for the introduction of but, a federal uh, order. But it's, yeah. it's not actually uh, a rumor. We have Robert Ford actually making them, obliging them to, to sign such an agreement for uh, giving them aid and help. Well. Uh, 
let's face it, I think uh, the Americans, after all, are interested in fragmenting the Arab order. And Syria is a central Arab state, you know. And uh, actually, uh, let me tell you the truth. Rumors in our environment actually materialize and turn out to be true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, I think that might be the case, considering uh, their insistence on the protection mm -hmm. of minorities, ethnic and religious minorities, and making sure that Syria, as we have known it for many years, will no longer be an obstacle to uh, Western scheming in the region. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Hanano, uh, before I ask you about what do you think about uh, the, uh, the theory of uh, federalism in uh, Syria, uh, let me ask you again about why doesn't uh, President Bashar Assad, uh, the same question as I gave to Dr. Khashan, why don't he just resign and call for early elections? Well, if he wanted to resign, he would have resigned from day one and saved the whole country the whole problem. But the, the, the issue is the opposition made the core problem is Assad. And Assad is not the problem. The problem for the West is the stand of the Syrian government, being the president being Assad or somebody else. They want to make sure the stand and the position taken by the Syrian government is not continual and does not even uh, being transferred from one person to another. They think that the Arabism and the support of the resisting, uh, the resistance in Lebanon and, and Palestine and the uh, keep calling of the liberation of Palestine and refusing to go to the peace uh, uh, table with the Israeli under any condition is just a stand taken by only the president of the country. It's the stand of the Syrian people. Again, whether we have a dictatorship or we have a democracy, this is the principle the country is founded on. And this is not going to change mm -hmm. if we change the president. Mm -hmm. If President Assad leave office now, I could call him a traitor. Mm -hmm. Until now, he is not a traitor. He is a traitor when he leave office and he leave the chaos behind. I mean, we have seen the replacement of Hosni Mubarak what happened to Egypt. Mm -hmm. We have seen the replacement of Saddam Hussein what happened to the country. We have seen the replacement of Libya's Gaddafi what happened to the country. You need to give us an example of a smooth transition when the head of the state leave the country, what would happen to it. We have so many examples to be stupid and believe the Western demand for him to move and then everybody will be heavenly. It's but, not going to happen. But, excuse me, Mr. Hanano, Dr. Khashan, Dr. Khashan was saying that they don't want him to leave now. They, they are in need of President Assad right now in Syria, and yet they send arms to the uh, armed insurgents. And at the same time, they, they seem that they want to weaken the regime in Syria to a point where they can force him to uh, make Syria a federal state. Do you agree? Well... That may be their goal, but do I agree it's going to happen? No, I do not. I always have hope it's not going to happen, and I know it's not going to happen. That's their goal, is to weaken the country. They have found out that this chaos in Syria created so much problem for them, somebody has to take care of it. And that's what they want President Assad to be, a take care mm -hmm. uh, uh, government of the problem they, they, they exported to our country. Mm -hmm. the, the, the problem they have with the federalism, it's not going to work. They already met when Dr. Lebwani said what he said. This is not news. Mm -hmm. If we go back in the history when this opposition started, when Mr. Ghalyoun was the president of this uh, Tilaf, mm -hmm. he met in Germany with the uh, uh, attorneys from the United States, and they already drafted the Constitution, which is identical of the Iraqi and Lebanese constitution, where it gives each sect a position in the government, mm -hmm. which inherited by that sect. It's not election. Now the Shia will get this position, the, mm -hmm. the, the Alawi will get this position, and mm -hmm. the Sunni will get this position. They already drafted the constitution, and it was waiting for the success of their uh, betrayal mm -hmm. to, to, to be impl implemented. Syria need to stand firm, on everything it has been standing for for the last three years, mm -hmm. and Syrian people are the one who will decide who comes and who goes, whether Assad stays or Assad leaves. Well, um, Mr. Hanano, well, back to, uh, to the U.S. decision to arm these groups. They might defend their move by saying that they are arming and helping moderate groups in order to take down some extremist takfiri groups, and that, would, might, that might help the regime uh, for some point. Well, do you think that is actually plausible? Is that a viable option now? No, it's, it's not a viable option because look at the, what, what has been changed position-wise from the United States. Al-Nusra 
was listed as a terrorist group. Mm -hmm. Nobody mentioned al Nusra now. Everybody talking about Daesh. Mm -hmm. They want to get rid of Daesh. And after they get rid of Daesh, al Nusra will be the second target. And after the Nusra, is, uh, they get rid of it, then uh, Jesh al-Hur will be the next target. Until the only uh, one left standing is the army of Bandar, mm -hmm. those Islamic uh, group. And then they will try to make a compromise with the Syrian government to include those people in the army and insert the cancer of Wahhabism into the principle of the army and the government. Mm -hmm. This is the goal from day one. And, and the destruction happened between now until that goal has been achieved. It doesn't bother them. They're not losing any of their uh, kids' life or, or future mm -hmm. or anything. We're paying the price. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to stand firm against well, it. Well, um, for that matter, from this uh, kind of uh, talk right there, do you think that, I mean, the Syrian government will have to compromise at some point for a certain deal. Now, if that is the scenario, how could they compromise with certain terrorists who are backed by, by uh, neighboring uh, Arabian countries who are seeking to destroy and put chaos in Syria? How can they compromise to such a such deal? Yeah, we all know that a military solution to the Syrian conflict is out of the question. Mm -hmm. Uh, everybody knows that the solution will have to be political based on a mutual agreement uh, on the basis of uh, a compromise. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But the compromise now, might yeah. be a constitution w of which Mr. Uh, Halano is speaking about. I, I, I don't think extremism will stand a chance in Syria. The international community, trust me, will not allow it. And the war in Syria will not end until after extremism is defeated once and for all. Uh, that's why uh, the conflict will go on for uh, still an unspecified but period I mean, of time. But I mean, extremism can be a bit halted if the U.S. speaks to its ally, Saudi Arabia, and tells it to halt arming and training terrorists. Well, uh, ag again, uh, you know, you need to distinguish between battleground conditions and peacetime conditions. The kind of terrorism and uh, extremism we are witnessing now is bound to give way to a negotiated agreement at the end. There is a time for fighting, for, uh, for the loss of sanity, and then head sober up and uh, reach uh, an agreement. I don't believe that the kind of madness that we see right now will go on mm -hmm. indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Some well, level-headed men will have to enter the picture and speak up their minds. Well, and now, uh, aside from Geneva, Dr. Khashan, we are seeing some new areas of cooperation between Iran and Turkey uh, yes. today and yeah. uh, during uh, sure. uh, this week. W and they will be discussing uh, imminent, uh, during the imminent visit of uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, uh, issues like Syria will be discussed on the table now. Yeah. Might that be a step one? for both countries actually working together to counter terrorism in the region? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, l let's face it. There's a whole lot more between Iran and Turkey than just Syria. The two countries' economic interactions are extremely important. They total more than $30 billion. Dollars. And uh, there is no question that Syria will come up during the meetings, but I don't think they will be able to resolve the conflict in Syria because the conflict in Syria has both regional, local, regional, and international dimensions. I think the emphasis will be on bilateral relations and uh, the question of northern Iraqi oil. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Mr. Hanano, uh, Turkey has definitely pulled a stop uh, on aiding the Takfiris and the extremists in Syria in fear of a spillover into its own territory. Now, how effective will any counter-terrorism efforts be when three years have passed already uh, since Turkey has opened its uh, soil to Takfiris, who most probably have created dormant cells inside Turkey? Mr. Hanano, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can, uh, can, did you hear my question? Do I have to repeat my question? Can you hear me? No, no, no. I heard you. I heard mm -hmm. you. Can you Go hear ahead. me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. What I'm saying is they already, for the last three years, they already established bases inside Syria, and they are definitely established bases inside Turkey. It's going to take some time, and it's, it's going to take collective effort from all the countries who were supporting them. Turkey by itself cannot be uh, uh, the only one who's paddling this. It has to come from Saudi Arabia, from Qatar, 
from Jordan, from Lebanon, everybody who was part of this uh, chaos has to collaborate to end this conflict. And this will come by some concession among the big one, among the leader of the free world, as they say. This is an agreement has to be reached by Russia, United States, and everybody will get his own people to implement what has been agreed on. And I think Geneva is accomplishing this, and, and, and that's really what's going on behind the scene, not this negotiation we're seeing mm -hmm. on TV. Mm -hmm. Mr. Akil Hananu, political analyst from Atlanta, USA, thank you very much for being with us tonight. And also special thanks to Dr. Hilal Khashan, political science professor at mm -hmm. ABU. Thank you for being sure. with us uh, tonight, Dr. Khashan. That was our show for tonight. Thank you for watching and have a great night.